Hello students, this module is about communication process in an organization. Now let us look into the detail of the communication process. Communication is a process by which meanings are exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols. Communication happens at all places through various ways such as we will see sometimes we write so that becomes written and sometimes we talk that becomes verbal and sometimes we just show our actions and that becomes gestural communications. Written communications are mostly formal and follow some guidelines. Verbal, uh, verbal communications that is oral is usually informal without any set formal agenda. Sometimes the communication may be by action such as happiness, expressing anger, sadness and so on. By simple means it is how we look upon people by seeing. This is gestural communication. Communication process also means a technique for expressing ideas effectively. To express ideas it involves certain elements of communication. So now we will go on to see what are the elements of communication later. And in this module uh, communication in organization is with the objectives and will enable you to compile the various communication methods and its role in the organization and also helps to describe the effective ways of communication in all types of organization elements of communication process. Each administrative communication has seven elements. Can you guess what are these elements? Yes. We all know some of the basic elements like sender, the message and the receiver. Now in this process of communication, I am the sender that is the communicator and you are the receiver that is communicating. And this module on communication is the message. So now have you got what is sender, the communicator, the message and the receiver or the communicating. In detail now we will look into the elements of communication process where we say that there are seven elements in a formal communication process. They are number one sender, number two message, number three encoding, number four transmission, number five receiver, number six decoding and number seven response. So these all together completes the communication process. So the first one will be the sender. The person who wishes to speak out or send or transmit a message is sender. So this sender is sometimes synonymously termed as communicator. Number two element will be the message, the information, the order, appeal, observation, instruction, report, all that has to be communicated in an organization becomes the message. The third element is encoding. So what is this encoding? Encoding is the act of putting the message in suitable words, charts or other symbols that will help in the next uh, process of transmission. The fourth element transmission exactly describes as the act of saying, sending or issuing the message to the next element which is the receiver. So the fifth element of communication is receiver. The respondent the addressee or the audience to whom the message is being communicated is the element which is termed as the receiver. The next element of communication is decoding. So this process is the act of understanding the message exactly as it has been sent by the sender. So the final communication element is uh, response. So this response is the reaction of the communication by way of uh, reply, action, use or storage of the message. So this all together uh, forms the elements of communication and makes the communication complete. Now we will go into the next uh, session on the ways to make communication effective. So here are some guidelines that helps us to make our communication better and effective. Whatever is the method of communication used for conveying ideas or information, the following points need to be borne in mind to make the communication more effective. The first and the foremost important guideline is clarity. 
the communication should be perfectly clear about the ideas facts or informations that has to be conveyed to the audience but such clarity can come only when the communicator has given deep thought to the ideas or information that has to be delivered to the receiver the message should not be over expensive and it must take into account peculiarities and interrelationships of the communicator and the communicate but at the same time it should also not be too inadequate making the communicator appear disapproved careless or uninformed and unprepared uh, even after the communication is passed over the second point that will help us in uh, effective communication is the sense of presentation and timing it is not only enough for the communicator to be himself or herself clear about what he or she intends to convey to others he, he or she should also be able to convey it in a manner so that others can understand it equally clear communication should be timely should reach the communicate when is in a most receptive frame of mind for example employees will be more receptive to directions when the pressure of work has not yet built up so much as to throw them on the defensive or employers will be more receptive just when the accountant has reported a sizable increase in the profits but all this calls for careful selection of words and right sense of timing communication in this sense is using and timing the words to create maximum effect the next point that we will take into consideration while we are planning the communication process is consistency the communicator should convey only such messages which him which he himself believes to be correct and proper for this it is necessary that he has a mastery of the subject of the communication ignorance of facts defeats the object of communication and becomes an objective likewise clerical and secretarial errors should not be allowed to creep into communication further what the communicator wants others to do he must first do it himself if there is a gap between what he says and actually does his subordinates might lose faith in him the next guideline will be frequency how many times the managers should communicate with a particular individual or group on the same subject this will depend on the merits of each case in some cases numerous successive communications may produce better results in other cases these may have an opposite effect by arousing resistance in the communicate but even where communications have to be numerous and in quick succession their timing format and media should be imaginatively planned to derive the maximum effect This is all the more necessary in case of a strong-minded manager who thinks that his subordinates are quite sensible and appreciative of his ideas may not communicate regularly and at best only drop a hint or an occasional letter. The next guideline will be to appeal emotionally. A communication may be either rational or both rational and emotional in appeal. but as it happens the communicate does not always react rationally to the message his emotions also sometimes determine his response and his response to forces such as love hate or fear may at times not be very rational now the question is in what proportion one should mix rational and emotional in communication clearly this will depend on the objective of the communication process and the attributes of the communicate in any case the communicator must be very careful in blending emotion with the reason the next guideline is about format the shape and size of communication is called its format should the communication be oral or in writing or what should be in its general style obviously this will depend on the needs of a given situation no doubt all communications have a beginning a body and an ending and the communicator should not lengthen or shorten any of these at the expense of the other moreover careful attention should be given to the contents of the message 
this will enable him to know if his message has gone home the next guideline will be the follow up a communication can be effective only when it is followed up systematically for example after a message has been delivered the communicator should ask the communicator or the receiver to repeat back the contents of the message this will enable him to know if his message has gone home we have seen the ways to make communication more effective next let me tell you the importance of communication there are various uh, importance there are there are various advantages in the process of communication the effective communication aids to managerial performance can boost up the performance of the managers helps in understanding and acceptance of work by employees at all levels it also creates leadership and aids in coordination ensures job satisfaction boosts economy in time and effort and also enables public relations okay now let us learn about the communication systems communication may be referred to as a pattern of interconnecting lines it may also be called a system for example in enterprise there may be one direction system of communication providing for speed and orderliness but having only a limited number of channels or there may be a circular a system of communication offering a wider choice of channels and greater satisfaction to the employees but has the disadvantage of being slow noisy and not properly organized as it has to follow the more number of channels or there may be a serial system of communication which provides considerable distance between the chief executive and his subordinate thus arming the middle level executives with considerable powers an enterprise may opt for any of communication systems or it may devise its own system by making the choice it should bear in mind the characteristics that get to make the communication system good and effective let me now tell you the characteristics of a good communication system multiple channels a good communication should have multiple channels of flow communication is rightly regarded as a tool for effective coordination of the different activities among the employees in an organization but it can discharge this role only when the organization provides for more and more unofficial channels of communication communication through the formal channels is not only time consuming and costly but also offers greater scope for distortion in the transmission of message formal channels of command should be reserved only for communication of formal orders instructions and other vital information the next one is standard procedures a communication system would be more effective for distribution of operating details throughout the organization when a standard procedure is devised and strictly followed the third one is effective control a superior subordinate relationship is a delicate and is a sensitive relationship and it should be recognized as such normally no subordinate likes to show his mistakes to another least of all to the person who appears to be his superior the next one is use of computers electronic computers have virtually revolutionized the management information systems and this plays a vital role in communication systems to get the desired information a manager has only to collect raw information and data from various sources and feed them into the computer and can target any source as an output next one is use of grapevine the dictionary meaning of grapevine is an informal means of circulating information or gossip or even a baseless rumor in this context an enterprise the grapevine takes on the role of spreading official information and message among its members so much so in fact that about official policies and procedures grapevine provides far better and more detailed information that e that even the official channels themselves can do a manager can always use the grapevine as a means of communication 
in fact most enterprise encourage the use of grape wine for this purpose this is because in certain organizational matters grape wine can be superior to the formal channels of communication thus a good system of communication should not disregard the potential of grape wine rather it should treat it as supplementary to the formal channels of communication next to learn is the types of communication communication may be classified more than one basis for example on the basis of relationships between the parties concerned that is between the employees communications may be sometimes formal that is which has a set agenda and it is usually a written form of communication and sometimes it may be informal also in an informal communication nothing is nothing has a set agenda it just goes on just through orally and so on the next method of communication is on the basis of its flow of direction communication may be classified as downward upward or a sideways communication the downward communication is the process of delegation and the concept that authority flows downwards and requires in information in the form of order and directions to flow downward from superior to subordinate thus downward communication fits in the traditional concepts of organizational behavior communicativeness is generally directive and required by the subordinates to reach the targets so next is the upward communication it is which is the vice versa of the downward communication so here the communication is upwards to enable management and evaluate the effectiveness with which its order have been carried out it is seen in organization with participative management where communication is most acceptable even from the lower people superior is open minded to accept the communications from the subordinates in this type of communication the next one is sideward communication this is the communication that occurs among the employees of the same cadre or the hierarchy for example a manager of the department communicating his own ideas and decisions with an other manager of the other department and the other way of classifying communication is on the basis of methods used or the purpose in this way the communication is classified as verbal communication number 2 written communication and number 3 communication through gestures of these communications communication through gesture is often used as means to make the verbal or written communications more effective one has only to attend a meeting addressed by a trade union leader to see how he uses his point for subordinate in an enterprise a handshake with a boss is enough to turn his head for days even if not for months and if sometimes the chief executive or a director pats him in full view of his co-workers he might all but float in the air this is all about the verbal communications in written communications also gestures can be used to express one's feelings ideas or sentiments in a letter of appreciation addressed to him by his chief executive a subordinate finds his name written in chief executive's own hand would delight him immeasurably so this is the wonder of communication process so it may be of the different ways and let us see these in detail the first one is the verbal communication so this verbal communication is an oral communication verbal communication is a more effective method of conveying ideas feelings suggestions informations and so on it gives communication a personal intimate touch moreover in a verbal communication the reaction or response of the communicator can be ascertained at once verbal communication may be in any of the following ways the uh, ways in which the verbal communication may occur is one, number 1 face to face contact this refers to direct speech between two persons or between small group of persons it is the most common type of verbal communication seen in most of the organizations the purpose of such contact is to communicate orders instructions requests and observations which has to be passed through all the employees within the organization the second one is the interview an interview is generally for discussion or for a conference 
It is a two way exercise in the sense that both the parties make statements about their respective positions and may ask questions and clarify the same in the same meeting. An interview can be successful only when it is held in a relaxed atmosphere. The person before interviewed should be encouraged to give out all information and facts that he knows. The next one is joint consultation. The joint consultation is a process whereby workers are consulted in every matter concerning them and is also given right to participate in the process of decision making about such matters. It may cover a wide ground from minor day to day problems to employees representation with the board of directors. Joint consultation is a process through which the management and the workers are brought face to face with one another to sort out the mutual problems. The fourth communication method is public communication. This method of communication may be used to announce a policy decision to the workers or to give lectures as part of the employee education program or to make speech to those seeking information. So these all becomes a public communication. The next type is broadcasting. It relates to statements from the management to staff generally or to certain sections of the employees. It also relates to public announcements and communications addressed to the shareholders. So, these are all the verbal mean, uh, means in which communication process may take place. Now, let us see the merits of verbal communication. Merits becomes, it is economical, it ensures personal touch with employees, has a better understanding, better reception or the, of the message is possible and has a greater flexibility uh, meeting the demands of the receiver. Also as common verbal communication has also certain inbuilt limitations. So, important aspects among these are these has a physical distance the, uh, and sometimes it may have a lengthy communication. There is no matters of record. The absence of record may lead into future absence of future references and there exist possibilities of misunderstanding. The next method is written communication. In a formal organization such as business enterprise, written communications are the most important and suitable media for conveying ideas, informations and so on. In every organization, one comes across a variety of orders, instructions, reports, returns and bulletins serving as the basis for communication. And of course, there are many incoming and outgoing letters. The forms of written communication are many. We can see all those one by one. Number one, orders. Orders from superiors to their subordinates play an important role as form of downward communication. Orders may be general, specific or definite. Orders issued by the top managers or of general type. Within the framework of the general orders, middle level managers prepare specific orders for onward communication to their supervisors. The supervisors who in turn make definite orders out of these and communicate them further to their own subordinates. To be effective, an order should be to the point and complete in every respect. It should clearly indicate what is to be done, how it is to be done where it is to be done and when and by whom it is to be done. So the next one is instructions. The managerial function of direction makes it necessary that subordinates be properly guided and assisted in performing the tasks assigned to them. Such guidance and assistance from the manager is provided in the form of instructions. The next is reports. Reports uh, may be classified in different forms. The one is routine reports, the other one is commission reports and also we have reports necessitated by special events. The first one on the routine reports, these are prepared periodically and according to an established procedure. They provide a regular means of communication, annual reports, magazines on staff members, monthly returns of productions and sales. Reports on outstanding bills are some examples of routine reports. The second one is the commission reports. 
the commissioned reports in respect of non routine or unusual matters that happens within the organization or an enterprise or called as commissioned reports of this kind may be required from a person to person who who is formed into the committee the third one is reports necessitated by specific circumstances in some cases the management may specifically lay down the circumstances when a report should be presented to them by certain individual or a group of individuals such reports may relate to an accident in factory machinery breakdown and so on there are certain characteristics of a good report a good report must possess the following characteristics so a good report should have a good clarity it should be simple adequacy of textual and statistical information should be present and enough cross references to support the communication process we will now go through the merits of written communication the merits are it becomes only more for distantly placed persons it can help in lengthy communications and it also has matters of record as it becomes a written document repeatability is possible delegation effectiveness among employees as usual also this type of communication has some demerits they are it is it has a long winding no amendments are possible little secrecy and there is no flexibility because it is already documented the next aspect to discuss in this module is communication problems otherwise termed as barriers in communication the information by suppression or withholding in either case the result is that the objective of communication transmission of meaning to others is defeated and becomes a problem broadly the distortion or filtering of information may be due to the following reasons mechanical barriers organizational barriers or sometimes even the personal barriers now let us look in detail about mechanical barriers the mechanical barriers are caused by distortion filtering and overloading of the communication channels distortion may be due to noise in the transmission or because the communicator does not use the right words to give meanings and precision to his ideas and interpretations next one which is filtering is caused due to distance between the communicator and the communicate as a message passes through the different points in the communication channel it may be altered or twisted by the persons in between whether intentionally or sometimes even unintentionally the next one is overloading it is caused by overworking of the communication channels due to an increase in the number of message to be delivered where the problem cannot be solved by the introduction of additional channels the manager should ensure that urgent and important messages are given priority and preference over the routine types of communication so next we will see about the organizational barriers they may be caused by an inadequate or improper arrangement for various intra organizational communication activities and establishment of inadequate or improper policies and rules as regards to communication the inadequacy of facilities meetings conferences and other mechanisms for hearing and sorting suggestions as well as complaints have an important bearing on the efficacy of the communication system that exists in the organization sometimes inadequate policies rules and procedures within the organization the communication policy should be adequate to meet all the present and future requirements of the enterprise the next one is status pattern the problems in communication also arises from the relative positions of the superior and the subordinates in the organization formal organizations are generally known for an undue emphasis on the hierarchical rank of, of the various personnel through the use of signs known as status symbols the third barrier is the personal barriers sometimes the failure in communication is due to personal problems of the persons to whom the communication is being addressed that is the communicator these may be as follows lack of attention or interest 
if the communicator is not attentive to the message he will not be able to grasp its meaning and act accordingly to the purpose of communication sometimes there may be hasty conclusions the communicator may be by nature a person in a hurry so that without going through the message carefully he may jump to hasty conclusions according to his own op opinion and belief lack of confidence in the communicator if for some reason the communicator has come to believe that the communicator's interest may be inclined to view the message with doubt and suspicion and this may defeat the purpose of communication sometimes there may be an improper state of mind at times the communicator may not be in a proper state of mind to receive the message correctly so the receiver is himself is not proper if he is mentally upset or emotionally not well balanced this is likely to adversely affect the reception of the message communicated by the communicator to the communicate as a conclude to this module communication becomes a vital tool of human life cycle even right from the fetal stage in the stomach of the mother as such communication becomes the basic and vital tool for any organization for all its employees to follow either small or large the organization may follow a right method and a flexible system that may suit its needs and of its uh, needs to its organization and its employees so that to ensure a participative organization is possible and need not have a rigid communication process an effective communication at all places will make everything very effective hope this module was also effective